My name is Ashley, creator of the Rasmi Dispatcher, 911 Dispatcher out here in California. And I believe the world needs more dispatchers. But more importantly, the world needs more happy dispatchers and folks being happy in the thing that they are spending 10 to 12 hours a day doing. And for that, I'm giving you this video with my top five things to consider when considering on applying to be a 911 dispatcher. The first thing you should consider is the application process. Now I go into depth about the application process in this playlist and in a bunch of other different videos, but in short, the process is long and it is draining, but it is worth it. It is just something you need to consider when applying for this job. Because of the long process, you may have to continue doing your other job as well as finding another job to bring continue to bring in income while you wait to hear about this one. So take a look at where you are in your life and understand that this process is not going to be quick. And if you are looking for a quick hire, it just doesn't work like that because of the extensive steps that you have to go through when applying. And just a broad summary of that, you apply, you typically have to do a pre-employment test. After the pre-employment test is passed successfully, they will bring you in for an interview. If they like you, they're going to put you into backgrounds. A backgrounder will investigate you, your life, and everyone in it. Once you successfully pass that, you will be asked to submit to a polygraph test, a medical exam, and a psychological exam. And after all of that, Hopefully, you will be asked if you would like to join the department as a 911 dispatcher. But again, long process, and that means it's just something to consider, not something to stop you from applying. The next thing that I believe you should consider when applying for this position is the training process. It is honestly one of the hardest things that I have gone through. And I've done it twice. And it is a long, lengthy process where you are being constantly critiqued and molded to be able to do a very tough job. And if you're watching this and you're currently in the training process, hang in there. It gets easier, but it is tough. You're going to be working day shift, swing shift, night shift, you're not going to be consistent. You're going to be working with different trainers and across different types of technology, depending on how the department is set up. So if you're looking for something that has consistency early on in your career, you're not going to find it in this training, just because you're going to have to adjust your life to the training rather than the training adjusting to your life. So it is something to consider when applying for this role. The next thing to consider is shift work. A lot of folks who do not work in a medical or a first responder capacity probably have not participated in shift work. Shift work is consistently just working longer than an eight hour day. You could work at a department that has 10-hour shifts or 12-hour shifts. Now, some benefits that come from shift work, assuming we are in a staffed center, is that you work a little longer and you get a little more time off. We'll go a little more into depth about the cons in my next tip, but understand that if you are getting into this line of work, like I said, especially in the training portion, you have to be willing to work a day shift, a swing shift, or a graveyard shift. And more importantly, these shifts are typically divided up on a seniority basis. That means the longer you have been at this agency, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to pick the exact shift that you would like based on your lifestyle. 
So if you are coming into an agency where a lot of the folks who have been there for a long time enjoy day shift as a new and as a trainee, you're probably going to be stuck with a graveyard shift or a swing shift rather than maybe your preferred day shift. Day shift typically looks like a 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. type schedule. If you're on a 12-hour shift, swing shift could be 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. type of schedule, where graveyard could be like a 6 p.m. to a 6 a.m. schedule. So it is something to consider, especially folks who have a life that has children, child care to consider. Again, not a reason not to do this job, just something to be aware of when you are applying because the department is not going to adjust to you you're going to have to adjust to this schedule. The next thing to consider is in regards to mandated overtime, holdovers, and holidays. So answering 911 is a 24-7 job and operation. We don't close for the holidays. We don't close for the typical things that other jobs give time off for. We are available 24-7, seven days a week for any emergency or non-emergency situation that is going on for a citizen. Someone always has to be in that seat. So if you are working a 12-hour shift and someone calls out, it is possible that you're going to be held over for a 14 or 15-hour day while they work on finding coverage. There is also a significant shortage of dispatchers that many centers are experiencing. So there might already be some mandated overtime worked into the schedule that you're going to come across. It is a reality that a lot of centers are operating below their minimums and that creates overtime for the department and not optional overtime, mandated overtime. So that is something to consider and something to research and ask about in your interview process what that looks like for that department. Are they in a situation where they are understaffed and are requiring overtime? This could be amazing for you if you're wanting to make a lot of money. Or it could be something that makes you look at a different agency because you're not wanting to spend over amount of time at work outside of your work schedule. But what you need to understand is it is a reality that you may be mandated to come in on your day off to cover someone or you may be mandated to stay until they find relief for you. It is a part of working in this type of industry, and it is something that I am hoping with channels like mine and all the other channels that are popping up promoting first responders and 911 dispatchers that we can help decrease across the states because the world needs more dispatchers. But... You also need to be aware of the realities of this job because it's not all perfect. We are always working to improve, but we don't want to provide people a false reality of what to expect when applying for this line of work. So if you are expecting to have every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, every 4th of July, every holiday off, this probably is not the line of work for you because Unfortunately, it just doesn't happen. Everybody has family. Everybody has people they love. But someone has to be in these seats 24-7. So someone has to work those holidays. Something to discuss with your family. Something to discuss with your loved ones. If that type of lifestyle is going to work for you. So the next and final thing to consider is the trauma. The reality of the trauma that you are going to be taking on the calls that you are going to be hearing, the crimes that you're going to be audibly witness to, it's a real thing. It is something that everybody handles differently, and it is something we need to talk about from the moment that you are considering this job as well as the moment you actually accept and enter this line of work for training because every call affects people differently. We all bring our own stuff, our own baggage into this line of work. Something that might 
tug at my heartstrings might not bother my shift partner or you. So the reality of the trauma that we hear and the need for self-care and having an understanding of how you're planning to take care of yourself in this line of work from day one. Don't wait for that big call to happen for you to know your plan to take care of yourself. The trauma that we hear and experience is real. You have to realize that when someone's calling for help, the first person that hears that cry for help is a dispatcher. And you're going to be listening to a lot of folks' worst days. And you need to decide for yourself and for your family and the relationship you keep if this is a good situation for you. But know that in this line of work, there has been a large shift acknowledging the trauma and the experiences that dispatchers take on. There's peer support. There's mental health awareness. It is definitely an age where we are no longer sweeping things under the rug and we are advocating for self-care in this line of work. So know that there are more services out there now than there have ever been in the past for dispatchers and first responders in general. Those are my top five things to consider. The application process, the training process, the reality of shift work, the mandated overtime and holdovers, and the trauma. Those are all things to consider when applying to be a 911 dispatcher. In my opinion, they are not reasons not to do the job, They are just reasons to take into consideration when considering applying. If you found any of this information to be helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Like this video, and if you have a question about anything in regards to being a 911 dispatcher, feel free to leave a comment. I do my best to answer them within my scope of practice. The world needs more dispatchers. And if you think you could help contribute to this line of work, I encourage you to reach out to me if you have any questions and check your local agencies for any opportunities to apply. Until next time, everybody, stay raspy.